Hello everyone, my name is Falcon, an analyst with Unusual Whales, and today we're going to go over a few of the newer features on our platform in Gamma Score, Flow Ratio, and Cope. Before I get into them, however, I'm going to show you all how to get there. You want to navigate to the top of the screen and click on the Flow tab. From here, go to the left sidebar and click on Intraday Analyst. So bring up the main landing screen for Intraday Analyst. Up in the top left is search bar. You can search for whatever ticker you want, be that Q's, Apple, Spy, or anything under the sun, really. We have most of it. But this is going to be the main focus of the video, this chart right here. So these are Gamma Score, Flow Ratio, and Cope. You can toggle all of these on and off and look at, for example, Flow Ratio and Cope and see if there's any patterns in there, or Gamma Score and Flow Ratio. You can just look at the price in itself, too. But the main focus is these three indicators, so let's stick on that. One thing to make note of is that these indicators are just directional indicators, and the values of them don't matter that much outside of them being positive or negative. For example, we can turn off flow ratio and gamma score here. You can see that COPE is negative here, and up here it's positive. The only thing this tells us is that it's net bearish or net bullish. When it's negative, it's net bearish, and when it's positive, it's net bullish. Same thing can be said about flow ratio. Gamma score, however, will never dip negative, but I'll get into that later. Let's start off with COPE. COPE stands for the Cumulative Options Premium Effect, and it measures the cumulative premium over the past two sessions paired with today's session. We can see here that there's a divergence in the options market with COPE. COPE is trending downwards and leaning net bearish in this first panel, despite the price of Qs going up throughout the day. This could lead to a lot of things. The market is bracing in bearish movement in queues, or it's a share-driven rally, and people are hedging. It's hard to tell, but this is a good example of a divergence. You can see in the second panel, COPE rips upwards and hits positive within a couple hours of market open, and stays trending upwards throughout the session, despite queues stock price staying flat. You can see here at today's open, there's a pretty big rally, followed by a very sharp drop throughout the day. Could this be from the first panel's pricing or the second panel's? It's hard to tell. We don't know where the market's headed. We just know what these values say. Next, we're going to go into flow ratio. Flow ratio is the net sum between bullish and bearish premium divided by a total premium traded throughout the session. Unlike COPE, this isn't cumulative, meaning it doesn't span multiple days. So the flow ratio value you're seeing is only applicable for that day. You can see here that flow ratio trended downwards and was negative, much like COPE. However, in the second panel, it trended upwards throughout the session, again, much like COPE, and started fading in the afternoon, following the price of Qs pretty well. However, here, it didn't seem to be affecting it that much at all. You can see in today's session, flow ratio dropped right out of the gate, and then stayed flat since then, meaning the market's slightly bearish, but it's staying pretty neutral as far as the options premium is concerned despite Q's stock price falling rather rapidly. From flow ratio, we're going to go into gamma score. Gamma score is the total call gamma traded for that day on that ticker divided by the total gamma traded for that ticker in the day. We can see here the gamma score fell right out of the gate in this first panel and stayed relatively flat with an end-of-day rally. Despite Q's ripping in the morning, fading a little bit, and then continuing upward trend, Gamma score stayed relatively neutral, but ticked up in the last couple hours of the market. Sometimes gamma score will reflect the actual price of the stock very heavily, which means that the options market could be steering what that stock is doing for that day. Now, this isn't verifiable, it's just a theory that we have. The good thing about these tools is you can come up with any type of strategy you like and see if it works. It's the beauty of the platform. You can see here, with Q's early morning rally in this third session, Gamma score ripped upwards, followed by a quick fade and staying relatively flat for the afternoon. This means that, well, the morning had a lot of call buyers, and as sentiment has tapered off throughout the day and Qs has fallen, the total call gamma has stayed relatively neutral, meaning there's less of an amount of call buyers in the market than there would typically be, since this value is a little bit low. Again, these values aren't concrete, and the actual number doesn't reflect anything. It's the relative number that we care about. For example, in this first panel, heading in the second panel, gamma score is quite high, meaning there's a lot of call gamma being traded in the market. 
Chris is down here, when gamma score is theoretically less than 50, this is one of its low zones, meaning there's not a lot of call buyers in the market. Let's go ahead and look at some other examples. Look at Hood. At the time of filming this video, Robinhood Markets has had some rumors that they were going to get acquired. Now, whether these rumors are true or not, we don't know. We just report on the data. That being said, if we look at price and cope, we can see cope being positive in this first panel and trending upwards during the second session before the big news outbreak. Cope rallied along with the news outbreak and then fell in the morning session, but still remaining pretty net bullish up until recently. From cope, we can go into flow ratio. We can see here in this first panel, there was a lot of bullish activity in the morning, followed by it tapering off in the afternoon, but still leaning net bullish. Despite Robinhood's price remaining relatively stagnant, we can see that there is more bullish premium being poured in the market than bearish. The second session starts out bearish leaning, despite Robinhood's price rallying a little bit shortly after. We can see that there's a huge spike in flow ratio here, which could have been somebody knowing about the news. It's hard to tell. That being said, this is not something to be ignored. Sometimes we can see COPE, flow ratio, or gamma score precede the stock price's movement, but it's not always perfect, so take that with a grain of salt. Again, we can see Robinhood's price here rallying in the afternoon when the news broke. And flow ratio was positive and started trending downwards, so somebody know? It's hard to tell. Today's session, we can see that flow ratio is trending down, and recently it is net negative, following Robinhood's stock price. Now look at gamma score. As I said earlier, gamma score can reflect the movement of the stock fairly well, as it did in this first panel. Gamma score stayed relatively flat with a lot of call buyers in it. However, in the second panel, we can see a huge upward rip of gamma score, up to 926. Again, these values don't matter. It's about the relative height and relative minimum of them. We can see price trending upwards here on Robinhood before the news broke out, but a lot of this call gamma could have been poured on in the morning by people who had heard about the news before the news broke out. As for today's session, call gamma is retained relatively high, and there's a lot of call buyers in the market, potentially hoping to catch another wake of this movement, despite Robinhood's stock price falling. We can go ahead and look at another example here with Qualcomm. With Qualcomm, we can see COPE following the stock price's movement relatively well. In this first session, it stays pretty flat even though it's net positive, meaning there's net bullish buyers in it. The stock price stayed relatively flat throughout this session and rallied in the second session in the second panel. We can see COPE trending downwards and eventually turning negative here as the stock price turned, started falling in the afternoon session. In the second panel, we can see COPE staying relatively flat, but falling throughout the day, despite the stock price going up. We see the stock price falling in the afternoon, falling alongside COPE. Third panel in today's session, we can see COPE rallying in the morning, staying relatively flat, and then tapering off fairly significantly before starting another rally. We can see this reflected in the price as well. We can see the price falling, and then hitting a big spike up to 135. This follows COPE fairly well. So sometimes it doesn't always work as a leading indicator, and sometimes it might just follow the stock's price. You can go ahead and look at flow ratio here. You can see that flow ratio started off leaning largely bullish, but tapered off and stayed relatively flat in this first session. The second session, we can see it rally with the morning and fall off later in the afternoon, turning negative as Qualcomm's stock price fell. We can see in the third panel, in the third session, a Qualcomm stock price rose alongside flow ratio, but promptly fell. It started picking up the pace here, and we saw flow ratio turn bullish from it being bearish down here. And the stock price followed. Now for gamma score. You can see here gamma score stayed relatively flat in the first panel in the first session. A lot of call buyers pouring in in the morning. Followed by a quick decline back to a pretty stable average. In this third session, we can see some call buyers in the morning and the gamma score staying relatively flat for the rest of the day, followed by a little spike whenever this spike was. 
That's about all I have for today. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you learned something.